everyone, this is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, June 30th, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a reverse aging health call tomorrow, Friday, at 9 p.m. Eastern. One of our one of our biggest challenges in this life is to be able to let go of attachment. Being attached is what prevents us from seeing. It is what clouds this miraculous awareness. Jeffrey Sugan Arnold. So there you are, sitting with your legs crossed, visualizing your new dream house, soulmate, ideal career, and that lottery jackpot job you want to manifest. You want it so bad, that you can almost taste it. You have been visualizing, feeling, and working on attracting it for quite a while now. Yet for some reason, nothing is happening. Should you just throw in the towel and give up? What is blocking you from manifesting what you so deeply desire? Attachment is always the culprit that clogs up your manifesting vibration. You may be asking, how do I know I'm experiencing attachment versus a really strong desire? You are definitely attached when you think and feel that you must have or experience this something in order to feel at peace with who you are in the future. A good rule of thumb is that any time you feel that you have to have this one thing to be happy, free, successful, or alive, then you're attached and might want to take a look deeper inside to see what is really going on. Whenever you are attached to something, you'll notice that your body tenses up. And you might feel frustrated, uptight, or anxious thinking about what you need to do to manifest your desired outcome. The anxiousness that you feel is a form of fear, which always lowers your manifesting vibration and is truly what is keeping you from actually receiving what your heart deeply desires. The feeling of attachment is very sneaky and can creep up on you when you least expect it. In fact, one may be caught in a repetitive cycle of being attached to someone or something without even being aware of it. The easiest way to know if you're truly attached is to ask yourself, can I find peace if this never manifests the way I think it should? Can I find peace if this never manifests the way I think it should? And then notice how your body reacts. If you find any tight, tense, or heavy feelings arise inside you, you are most certainly playing a subtle hidden game of attachment under the surface. The secret is to breathe deeply into the area you feel the lightness until you've released this tension. Once the tension is gone from your body, Take a moment to affirm that your desired outcome or better is now heading your way. Through the course of one's life, every one of us, every human being, will at some time experience some form of attachment. Miracles manifest when we let go of attachment, yet some people will tell you otherwise as they are caught on the idea that being detached is a negative state. There is a fine line between being aloof, despondent, or resigned, and being detached. The key is that healthy detachment comes from vast reservoirs of trust, faith, and inner peace. Whenever you are detached in a healthy way, you're happy with your life as it is and can relax enough to completely trust the universe will support your manifestation if it's meant to be. Detachment is a fine art of trusting 
in your future destiny to such a deep degree that you do you do not allow your ego to make any judgments about whatever your experience of life is. A healthy level of attachment is powerful in the world of manifesting because it enables you to be fully open and receptive, which in turn attracts new opportunities and people to you. Every time you find a healthy, balanced level of attachment, your desire will materialize for you much faster and far easier. Of course, truly letting go of attachment to a deep desire you've had for years is a very tricky thing to do, unless it's causing you loads of suffering, which it probably already is. The golden key lies in feeling your suffering and then seeing the correlation between your amount of suffering and the level of attachment you have. When you understand what's happening, you will soon let go. By using the detachment technique for manifesting, it does not automatically guarantee that you will create the outcome you desire. By using this detachment technique for manifesting, it does not automatically guarantee that you will create the outcome you desire. You cannot pretend to be, you can't pretend to be detached. You know, some people pretend to do things while secretly hoping you will manifest a certain outcome underneath the surface. Your mind is sneaky, and it can pretend anything. The secret to knowing the truth is how your body reacts for your body cannot lie in the universe. Your body cannot, rea- re- cannot be lie to the universe, right? No matter what you believe, your body cannot lie to the universe. If you're using the technique of being detached as a strategy for getting what you want, then you're missing the point completely. It's about feeling good inside, no matter what manifests or doesn't manifest in your life. The great secret to freeing yourself from attachment is recognizing that you are the infinite spiritual source of consciousness, which is the greatest experience of freedom, love, and bliss. Do you need anything more? A pizza will come and go in a matter of hours, while the spiritual source is omnipresent forever. The really cool thing is that when you're tapped into your spiritual connection within while gently holding, gently holding the intention of creating whatever you want to manifest, your desire has to show up. Okay, It has to. The really cool thing is that when you are trapped or tapped into your spiritual connection within within, while gently holding the intention of creating whatever you want to manifest, your desire has to show up. This is one of the greatest manifesting secrets that there is. It's a way of gently communicating with the universe what it is going to do for you. By accessing your divine connection, you automatically become utterly at peace with the idea that you might or might not ever manifest your desired outcome. You transcend it all. Then it really doesn't matter what happens in your future. This is a very evolved place to live from as amazing things will manifest when you're feeling the God source beneath your feet and flowing between your breaths. The magic of manifesting is an experience you deserve to have daily. By letting go of your attachments, you are destined to find reoccurring joy, freedom, and love for who and what you already are. When you discover how good it feels, to be detached from past memories and future desires, you are definitely making major progress in this lifetime. Then you can truly start having some real fun and realize every day that perfect outcomes are always manifesting into your life. Sometimes it's the greatest gift that we don't always get 
what our ego wants. This allows the universe to create the most beneficial situation for our soul's evolution and gives us more of an opportunity to receive that super special something that is even better than what we originally asked for. A lot of people will poo-poo this and, you know, the, the ego mind gets in the way and, oh, you know, this doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. You know, we always make lists. All of this is training ourselves, educating ourselves. It's an effort that we either choose to do or don't. Some throw it, throw it aside. Others actually implement it so that they can gain the knowledge and understanding of who and what they are. It's like this week, a list of every, you know, make a list of everything you think, feel, or perhaps might be attached to in your life. Everything you think, feel, or perhaps might be attached to in your life. Don't leave anything out. When you feel complete with your list, circle the top three things that are bringing you the most amount of suffering. Now, here's the fun part. Every morning you wake up and imagine seeing yourself smiling and full of joy, even if those three things manifested for you or never happened at all. Find this place inside you of pure awareness where the spiritual source of existence resides and relax into that while you see yourself smiling with joy and freedom in your heart. Make a strong commitment to yourself that you are going to feel a true state of inner peace no matter what occurs in your future. This is the path to total liberation. And if you choose, you can also practice looking inside yourself with each being you encounter and releasing this wellspring of compassion onto them. Smile. Be lighthearted. Give them the joy of connecting with you. And you, my friend, will be soon swimming in an exquisite ocean of joy everywhere you go. Tell yourself that it's easy to let go of the old and embrace the new. Just follow that lighter, freeing feeling as you go through this week. As you get into the habit of being compassionate with others, this new lighter, unattached experience of life will become the foundation of your being. This is the day your life will truly blossom, and you'll spring forth into your relationships like the lotus flower rises up to bloom from the deep, warm mud below. Everything is a choice. It's all a practice that we choose or we don't. It depends on how much the ego mind has intervened with us that determines our conviction and understanding. And see, so you, have you ever experienced when you let go of something? I mean, it's not like you're giving it up, right? You, you, you're in a mode where you say, hey, it's okay, right? It's not a big deal. If this doesn't happen, it would be great that it would happen. So that's kind of like an in-between. You have this. And, and it, won't, it wouldn't be a big deal to you if it didn't happen. This is a way of loosening yourself and letting go of things that you're fixated on, that you're attached to. But see, you intend it, right? It's something that you would like. It's something that, you know, you would really enjoy. So... But you know that, hey, I'm fine without it. It would be great with it, but I'm fine without it. But see, a lot of times the ego mind will pull us into the direction of attachment. And so what does the attachment do? It causes us to hold on too tight. That's what happens. 
it causes us to hold on too tight. And when we hold on too tight, usually, there's no room for movement. And there's no more for movement and nothing takes place. You know, we get to the point where we say, wow, this is useless. It's not, it's not working. It's like when you experience, here's something that you might uh, identify with. Just say you, you, you have, you know, you like, or you've got things and stuff and life's just hopping along. And something occurs and everything's gone, right? But something happens in that process. You begin to realize is that everything is temporary while in this life. Everything's temporary. Everything is temporary. Things that you thought that you couldn't bear not having, right? All of a sudden don't aren't important. It just it, it's not important to you. Then, then what becomes important to you is having a roof over your head and a bed to sleep in. That's it. That's important to you. Everything else is fluff. And you really, you're not, it, it isn't a big deal in the event that it's gone. That's why when we say you, you can't be poor until you've been wealthy say, can't be poor until you've been wealthy. So what about all these poor people? They don't know what, is, what, what poor is because they've never been wealthy. First you're wealthy, then you're poor. Then you know because you have the difference. Say. You can appreciate a lot more. Now people who are in poverty that eventually become wealthy They know the difference. And then when you're wealthy and you go into poverty, you know the difference. And it's all about experiencing. You have someone that you take two people and you've got one person, right, has never really lost anything. You know, they covet things and collect things and so on and so forth. Then they go through life. The other person has built up things and had things and lost things and then built up again and lost them again. The difference is, is that the person who has lost things, everything at times, values everything. And then they start to realize the fun of it is replacing the things that they lost. And, and then you have the perspective, that it's just things. They're things for us. It's entertainment. Remember when you were a kid and you got something, you got a toy, right? You really wanted that toy. You really thought about it. And it was like all that mattered was that toy. Whatever kind of toy it was. Or doll or whatever. And then when you got it, you played for you played with it over and over and over again, right? And then after a while, the novelty wore off and it just sat in the toy chest. And then your attention was on something else. It doesn't change as these bodies get older. We still do that. We fixate on something and we get it, right? I mean, we manifest it. And it's fun. It's great. And, and then it kind of dies off. You know what I mean? It just, it, it's not that important anymore. Because you have it. So that's because of the ego mind. And, and the attachment that you have that we form for things, then the ego mind comes in and says, yeah, well, you got to get something else. Because you know? it doesn't fulfill. It's not fulfilling for us. So then we go to other things and we get other things. You have people who go out and they'll go shopping and they'll get things and they feel happy and it's fun and everything. But then it fades. It's temporary. The one thing that's constant, the many things that are constant within us, is that that joy, that bliss, that happiness, and, and no attachment really, is within us. 
And that is eternal. And it's a choice for any of us. It's always a choice. You make the choice to say, you know, I, I'm, I'm not attached to these things. I have them. If I didn't have them tomorrow, it wouldn't be the end of the world. That's the kind of, of detachment. Because you're, you're, you're not, it's not something that you have to have. It really isn't. But you would like it. Just like someone says, well, you want this? And you say, yes. Well, how bad do you want it? I really want this better. Well, would, would it offend you or cause you problems if you decided, if, if you didn't get it, if it wasn't yours? No, it wouldn't. But I would like to have it. And so you feel that in, in the heart-mind because you can't fake it. The universe will know you're faking it. So you just, no, it's, it's okay. And that's when things form and come to us in, in those moments, say, because you don't have attachment to them. It's when we have attachment to something, it's when, boom, it, it frustrates us because we, we, you know, it's like somebody keeps pulling it away from you. And every time you try to reach for it, it's, it's snapped away. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies we're in. We are not these bodies. No matter how much the ego mind tries to convince you, we are not our names. We are not our status in this life. We are not our character, our personality. We are not the ego mind. We are the God within the body. And what happens is, is we inherit the ego mind, subconscious mind, to master them. Now, some of us will take thousands of lifetimes to do this. Others less. It's a choice. Again, it's a choice. Because our bodies, the bodies we're in, they're phenomenal. But... They're like sponges, super powerful electromagnetic sponges, and they absorb everything. We store through the years, as we're in these bodies, we store anxiety, stress, fear, worry, attachment, all kinds of things. And after years and years and years, the, 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 those storing that, can become dangerous because parts of the body biologically will break down. It's like in this country that we're all in, America, the number one destroyer of these bodies is stress because we store it. Now, it's not like we know it. Well, I'm going to put some stress here. I'm going to put some stress there. We do. It's just. It's like an autopilot. It automatically is stored because many of us don't know how to release it, let it go. So we do the next thing. We store it. Now, how do I know that? Well, when I was a massage therapist years ago, I learned this about the human body, male or female they would store this energy, this stress, in different parts of their body. It could be anywhere. It could be their glute, uh, could be their shoulders, could be their neck, their head, their feet. Could be anything. And when it was released, it was like Shangri-La for them. So we focus on our breath. And the breath for us is absolutely magical. Because it stills, we take easy and slow breaths in through the nose and easy and slow breaths out the mouth, and it stills the ego mind and the subconscious mind. We leave them alone as 
what that means. We just leave them alone. We don't interact with them. And it's like this pressure is, is removed, released. And again, that's a choice. So when we leave the ego mind alone, subconscious mind alone, what happens is, is that you know that mind chatter that we have? Every one of us has this, this noise, this mind chatter. 24-7. That's gone. Not only that, we all put out, each of us puts out over 60,000 thoughts every day without fail. Now, that doesn't mean that we know every thought that we are sending out to the universe. That's why Buddha says, you know, master your thoughts. And so we have these little surprises that show up in our lives, right? Where did that come from? It was your thought, but you didn't know you sent it out. Not only that, that's gone. Okay? And then we have tens of millions of billions of thoughts that fly by like clouds in the sky in front of us. And they're not really thoughts. They're programs. And 99.999% of them are not ours. So when you're in the now, to practice being gentle, kind, generous, and humble with oneself at all times, being in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, deep eternal gratitude all the time. And sometimes, you, you, you know, you notice that you're out of gratitude, you just focus back onto what you're grateful for. You might say, I'm grateful for my hands, my fingers, my eyes, my ears. And, that, and, not, and after a while, it, it's automatic. You will always find, you will just during the course of the day, you will find things to be grateful for. You just go into gratefulness. We take a lot of things for granted. It's easy to do because of repetitiveness, say. You know, it's like you have a car, you've had a car, a vehicle, and you drive and you get places and everything, and you do this for years, right? And then all of a sudden, you don't have something to drive. You can't go places whenever you choose. And so you're kind of locked away from the freedom and flexibility of being able to go where you want to go. Then you say to yourself, boy, I'll tell you, I really appreciate having a vehicle that can take me places. We take these things for granted. We don't stay in gratitude. And then when things happen, they go a different way. You don't have that. You lose that. You can't afford it. It's gone. You know, a lot of things can cause us to say, wow, did I ever take that for granted? Now that I don't have it, man, does it really impact me. So when we're focused on the now, the body releases and lets go and starts to relax. The shoulders relax and drop down. You see, we all bunch our shoulders to a certain extent, and we don't know it. We're aware of it. Our, you know, we've got that mind chatter. Our minds are so busy, ego minds so busy, going here, going there, doing this, doing that, thinking about this, got to get that, this, and so on and so forth. Now, on occasion, still, we all do this. You could be focused on something in the now, and then you float off. It's not like you say, I'm going to float off. You just float off. But then you're aware, and it's not an issue. You just say, I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. And you may find yourself doing that several times a day. But you're learning, say, you're practicing. And the more that you practice, the more you're going to be aware. And the challenge is staying in the now. And we've got all we need to do that, moment to moment, the breath, the now, space between heartbeats. Now, someone could say to you, 
nonchalantly say, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? You won't be able to answer them because you'll be in the now. You're only focused on the moment. If someone's asking you that question, you go, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. You ever done that? You ever had that response to somebody? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. I'm I'm focused on the now, this moment. <laughs> I'm not I'm not focused on what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Because I don't know if tomorrow will come. So I enjoy each moment, moment to moment. Now we you know, we all reminisce, we all have nostalgia things, you know, things that bring us memories of good happenings and you know, past memories and stuff. And sometimes we just kind of hold into it. Boy, that was a great time. Something might spark it. Could be anything. And you go into it and you say, that was great. I really had a good time. Could have been years ago. You don't know. But it comes in and we have fun with it. And then there's, then there's times that you'll be doing something. You'll say, you know, I, I did this before, and I did it th- th- that certain way, and it didn't work. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to try a different way and see if that works. Now, we all have, uh, like, a, this. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great hall, and we all have one. And it stores everything. Not just this lifetime, all lifetime. All experiences. Right? See, the subconscious mind is a recorder. And so when you enter that baby body, and for as long as you're in that body, it, it records everything. And it doesn't record what you've experienced what you experience. It records everything around you. And it puts it in a great hall. And the interesting thing is is that it plays it back at times. So you could be doing anything, and you, then you go into this feeling that, wow, this seems very familiar to me. It could be out of the clear blue. It just dawns on you. This, this really seems like I know I've done this before. And you have. And, and, but you don't correlate that. You don't connect it with when. You just say, I know I've done this before. Some people call it deja vu. And the reason is, is the subconscious mind recorded that event and then played it back at a later date for you to experience it in a way again. Have you ever have you ever been with someone, right? And you're interacting and you say to yourself or to them, this really seems very familiar, like you and I have done this before. And they may respond by saying, you know something, you're right. So you start to understand this, it's the subconscious mind. It records and it plays things back. It stores them in the Great Hall. Now, we'll go into the Great Hall, okay, and we'll open the door and turn on a light. And we, when you walk into a room, you don't realize it. It's just, it's an automatic and it's a brief, it's a flash. You look at the ceiling and the walls, right, just quickly. Now, when you walk into your Great Hall, You do the same thing, but it is so vast that you don't see any ceilings or walls. Nonetheless, you'll go into different um, shelves and drawers, and you'll get some movies and pictures and books. And you'll go sit in an easy chair. You'll see a rectangle, so white slates just floating in the air. And you'll watch some of the movies, and, and you'll read some of the books, and you'll look at some of the pictures. you have a great time. But then you, you don't stay there. You, you'll put everything away. You'll turn off the light, shut the door, and move forward in line. And on occasion, you'll visit again. But see, there are some of us that unconsciously will go in there in the Great Hall, and then they'll stay there way too long. So long that they take that pass, They bring it into a future that doesn't exist. They create that future from that past. 
and they relive that past and that future. That's why a lot of people say no matter what we do, we always end up here. Now, we, we go into the future, that, you know, and all of us kind of wander off there. And you, you visualize, say, three paths. And all of us are standing in the center path of now, right? And so we see these paths and we see how they're constructed. We see that the trees have formed golden canopies over each path, branches, the leaves, and the bark uh, are all shimmering gold. And then the path itself that you walk is brilliant emerald green flaming light and it appears to be grass and they're all they all are constructed the same but there is a difference like the past that we were just in in the great hall it's been used a lot so many have gone there and the future right just like yesterday and tomorrow and so the future the path on the right is also has, we, you can tell it's been used a lot. And so we're all standing in this center in the now. And we notice that that path, it looks almost brand new. Here's a choice that comes up. And it's up to each of us to determine, all right, am I going to practice being in the now? Or am I going to stay most of the time in the past? Or wandering around into a future that doesn't exist? It's, it's always a choice we make. So we go in, why do we go into the future? And why is the center path not, it seem like it's brand new? Because the ego mind doesn't exist in the now. It's, it's simple. It doesn't exist in the now. So it ain't going to want you to be in the now anytime at all, if, at anything, anywhere, shape, or form. It will do everything it can to pull you into the future or the past. So it pushes us, you know, pods, it push, 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 push. You know, you got to find this out. you got to know. you got to know when this is going to happen. When is this? Have you ever said this to yourself? When is it going to happen? It could be anything. So we go in the future and we seek external authority. We want someone to tell us what good things are coming our way. Right? What good things are coming for us? It could be anything. Usually the subjects are what? Money, right? Love, relationship, health, right? And so, you know, the number one seems most of the time to be money. So you go to somebody. You go to a card reader. You go to a pendulum reader. You go to a tea leaf reader. You go to a palm reader. Go to a psychic. Go to a clairvoyant. Uh, you know, there's so many. You go to an astrologer. And you go in and you get these readings. And you say, when, oh, you're, you're going to come into a massive amount of wealth, of money, in the next week. And, and then the person says, wow, really? Yeah. Unexpectedly, it's just going to come in. Well, do you know how much? No, but it's a lot. Okay, so you have three people that, li that listen you know, to a similar reading, and you have the one that says, "Ah, you know, this is all, it's all crap, but I'm not going to pay attention to it." Right? Then they go about their business, and, and then the second one fixates on it, writes it down in calendar, counts the days, you know, and then starts developing attachments to the outcome, what they're going to do with this and that, and if this if this happens, then they're going to do this. This happens, they're going to do this, and then they have expectations. So they're starting to expect things. I expect I'll be able to do this. I expect I'll be able to do that. And about nine times out of ten, it doesn't come to them. Now the third person, with complete trust in themselves and the universe, full faith, says, that's great. That's absolutely fantastic. And then they say to themselves, it would be absolutely wonderful if that came in for me. Now, and here's the fine line, and they say to themselves, well, in the event it did not happen, I would be okay with that. So they release it. They create it. They, have, they don't have expectations and they don't have attachments. 
and they let go. And majority of the time, it comes to them. You met people like that? You, you know, you say, man, how did, everything just seems to fall in their lap. How does that happen? Because they're not focused on it, see? They, they, they know, they have the faith and the trust in themselves and the universe. And it happens, it just, it just happens for them. Most of us, however, fight it, you know? We're either overboard or underboard with it. Now, we have parts of ourselves, right? And we, we, we have this illusion called separation. Because we're in, it, it seems like, well, you know, each of us are in separate bodies. How come we be one? That's what the ego mind starts, yeah, that's how the ego mind views it. You're not, you're not one, you're, you're separate. The tree across the street separate from you, how can you be one? That's a huge illusion, say, that's what keeps tricking us. So we have parts of ourselves that are stone cold asleep. We also have parts of ourselves that are awake to a certain extent, consciously aware, which means that we know that we are, are, we are from and of the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. We deeply love those parts of ourselves that are stone cold asleep as well as the ones that are awake. Now, the interesting thing, when you begin to realize that you're not separate from anything, then we understand that wherever, wherever, it seems that we are, right? You look at off worlders Galactics and Celestials, look at the Pleiadians, the Syrians, Arcturians, and Dramatists. You look at the feline, the Zeta Reticuli. You look at Anunnaki, Nords, Grace, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, and Avian. Many, many more. Many more. A lot of them are all separate. They're different planetary systems and blah, 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 blah. The gods within them are, the part, are part of the gods within us. And we're all experiencing in, 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 in physical forms of some kind. We're experiencing that physical form, and we're experiencing physical life. It's uh, the, the Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lots, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua. Same thing. They inhabit a physical form. And their gods are, are part of the gods that we are. Same with the archangels, cherub of seraphim archetypes. Same thing. Same with the, our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes we even have. The same with the um, in, inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, or guards and beneath earth. Same with light energy beings. You know, fairies, sprites, elves, gnomes, dwarves, trees, trolls, elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether. Mermaid, dolphin, whale, pegasus, unicorn, centaur, minotaur. It's not the body that's the one. It's the God within the body that's the one. This is part of our discovery as a civilization. One of the major parts of our discovery. So we look at this planet, right? Gods that we are within these bodies. And we say to ourselves, collectively, we don't really care to have this low vibe frequency on this planet. We, we'd rather have it that the frequency increase so we go into higher dimensions. So let's do that. Let's all do that. Let's focus on this planet. And this is what we are doing. Now, obviously, there's googaplexes of us. One googaplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. You can talk about trillions of googaplexes. And we're all here, and we're focused in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one. 
and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond. And forever it continues to grow, intensify, expand, and strengthen. Now we immediately form a massive white fire light circle around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This emanates from the gods that we are within these bodies. It is so bright, it grays out the darkness of sacred space. Not only that, you could take a whole bunch of suns, bunch them together, and our light, the light, it would pale in comparison to that light. And we, we flood, saturate, permeate this planet, infinity and beyond. This is continual. There's no escape. No escape from the atmosphere. No escape underneath, beneath the surface. No escape on, in, above, and below. So we begin to ascend above the planet, and we come in full contact with what we call an ocean of living. What is, what is it, really? What is the ocean of living? It's all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. So we describe it with what we've experienced here on this planet. So we take a, a, a grand finale fireworks display, a, a laser light display, and a, a, a ballroom globe uh, with the little faceted mirrors that you shine light on it and it floods the room. We take them, we combine them all, and we intensify them millions of times, trillions of times. And we combine them all into a massive crescendo, and in one burst of sparkling, vivid, clear, multicolored light filling everything. And that's near the ocean of glitter. Now, we look, at, we look at all the reflective points, which is basically all of us. It's everywhere. And we notice these little tiny microscopic mirrors, perfectly etched. We enter them. We discover that all of us. I don't care if it's Andromeda. I don't care if it's uh, Alpha Centauri. It doesn't matter where in existence we are. We are one. And we teach each other, learn from each other, all the time, infinity beyond. Now, if, you're, if your choice is to ensconce yourself in the exterior material world, that's your choice. You will miss most of that, learning, experiencing from everything around you. Those who choose to go within, they will see it all the time. You remember when you were a kid? You remember when you would look at something, you say, I want to be that. Well, it could have been anything, right? But you said it because through your heart and mind, you want, yeah, I want to know, I want to know what's be like. I want to be that. I'm going to be that horse. Okay. And then you'd act like a horse, right? Or I'm going to be that cat or that dog or that lion, and you'd act like that. Well, that hasn't gone anywhere. We can do that any time we choose. We focus on the now and our breath. We be still, and we look at something, and, and for a moment, you will know exactly what it's like to be that. And then we learn from everything. We learn from trees. We learn from bushes. We learn from a blade of grass, a leaf on a tree. We learn all the time. And we, then you go and say, I wonder what that's teaching me. And every time you're going you're gonna to know something that has been conveyed to you or, or transmitted to you. Nothing, seriously, in this life is random. Nothing. It is all finitely engineered and designed to perfection. So whatever happens around you, with you, for you, is all about teaching you, messaging you. 
And it all depends on what our choice is, how to be very receptive to that. And that comes of going within. Now we're immediately met with, we create the columns, firelight, right? And this reminds us, the guys that we are in these bodies, of many different things. Like we have Archangel Raphael carrying a brilliant emerald green flaming healing light. So we collectively have created this to remind us, the gods that we are in these bodies, that we're the power of healing in these bodies. Then we have Archangel Michael. He's carrying a violet blue purple flaming light. We collectively created this light to remind us, all the gods that we are in these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we come across the white firelight. And this is a light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe, inside and out, we are encased in a white fire armor. The white fire comes from the God within our bodies that we are. Pure, deep, eternal. There's nothing like the armor on this planet. It's way beyond that. And so lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, low frequencies, you know. Pure evil souls that have taken on too much darkness can't sustain their form around us uh, because we're we're holding such a high vibrational frequency they'll vaporize or they'll leave and this is why we are protected 24 7 infinity and beyond and you 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 are the only one that has the power to lower your vibrational frequency, whether consciously or unconsciously. And how do we do that? We float off into things like anger, hate, right? Revenge, guilt, manipulation, dishonesty, fear, stress, envy, hurriedness, and each one of those, it drops our vibrational frequency, lowers it. Enough so, so it creates a breach in our white fire armor, allowing all of the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then we have the possibilities of demon possession, attachment, and many other things. Now, you do decide to do that. We have fail safes. The gods that we are. So we create this double column of light. The first part of co a column of light is the, is the purple transmuting flame. So we created this to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matters, five matter frequencies and neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are, no more. Second part of this column of light, violet red. We created this part of column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. Then we come across golden white, pink white, this is a column of light that we created, the gods that we are within these bodies, to remind us all that we are the sun, the sunlight, the rain, the rainbows, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the trees, the forests, the soils, the animals, the clouds in the sky. We're everything. Everything is us. So in separation, delusion separation, we could, we'll look at a rainbow and say, that, look at that rainbow. Isn't that beautiful? i got to get a picture of that. 
But the journey within and through the heart-mind, you look at that same rainbow and say, through the heart-mind, that is the God that I am. Sunset, sunrise, that is the God that I am. And this is this goes through the heart mind, not the ego mind. And a shift always occurs. Now we continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us that carry physical form decide to step outside the physical form, hover effortlessly above it, and we do this because we can, and it's a lot of fun. So we come across a massive crystal light tower. Now the gods that we are in these bodies created that tower, and it's larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center of the tower, we discover this massive oblong sphere. The center of the sphere is this humongous golden white bowl of light. It, in turn, is surrounded by numerous rings of light, that seem to, a multicolored light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. This, in turn, creates this super bright, misty, glittering, sparkling cloud. And it's absorbed through our heart-mind. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. Now, we discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, Eternal love. Then comes gratitude, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and massive prosperity and massive abundance. And all of this is a reflection of the gods that we are in these bodies. Now, at the top of this tower, we designed it, the gods that we are in these bodies, so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, infinity and beyond, saturating, permeating, and flooding this planet, all life, the highest supreme value in the universes. What is the golden ocean? Pure, deep, eternal love, highest and the highest high vibrational frequencies. And all of us, we are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is a drop, drops of golden ocean. The only illusion is separation. Now we see our meditative sphere. All the gods, the gods that we are in these bodies, created this sphere over four years ago. It holds, we are moving towards 1900 meditations in perpetual motion, expanding, growing, intensifying, and strengthening. Every day, for over four years, seven days a week, without interruption, sometimes a couple of times a week, all that intent, all that deep eternal love, all that power and energy of a God force love light energy, hundreds of millions on and off world, consciously aware, focused on this planet's liberation. That's massively powerful. It's beyond the ego mind's comprehension. And there's no escape from it. None whatsoever. That's why this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. That's why it's expanding, growing, intensifying, strengthening. Will it end? No. And you can tap into it any time you choose. In the now, focused on the breath, in quiet, being still. And you can see what's going on, what we, the gods in these bodies, have configured, right? So we configure... You can sit there and float and watch this all over the planet. You're just watching. You're not judging. And 
we create this uh, this golden white pink shimmering um, light atmosphere, right? And we walk through it. And it is pure deep eternal of the highest, the highest high vibrational frequencies. And so we watch as all of this goop, this black, black, black goop, and, and uh, that dark matter that is being evaporated from the planet. And we're talking about pure evil. We're talking about souls that have absorbed too much darkness. We're talking about lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, all being evaporated from the planet. And it passes through this golden, white, pink atmosphere that you can walk through. And it disintegrates, flashes. It's less and less and less. Any of it that makes it up to the sky, we created a more golden, white, pink light. But this is much more intense. You couldn't stare at it directly because of the brightness of it. So... Any of this goop, you know, the rogue AI goop, and any of it that gets to the sky in one immediate flash is vaporized forever, gone. And this continues. And it will continue. And we will continue to increase the vibrational frequencies. And we will enter higher dimensional frequencies. That's how it works. And it's a choice, always a choice. For today, explore the perfection of duality. Notice there, there is both darkness and light within every person, thing, place, and experience. Get out a pen and paper and write down all of your biggest judgments and negative beliefs you have about other people. Then write down the opposite, positive aspect of each belief. Notice what happens when you see the divine balance within each negativity in your life. Explore and feel this divine balance within yourself today. What would your life be like if you only saw a divinely balanced, perfect state in everyone and everything? Remember, this universe is completely balanced, perfect, and divine. The negative judgments created from the mind make your world appear to be anything but that. Acknowledge the perfect balance that exists in this life and recognize this. Each time you judge yourself or someone else today, I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
take an easy breath in slowly through the nose and an easy slow breath out of the mouth. Uncontrollable mental chatter is the cause of all suffering in our lives. The moment we stop the mind for even a few minutes, a powerful peace filled energy arises inside us. Try it and see. To become the divine observer of your mind and step back from the 60,000 thoughts that run through your head each day, simply choose to become the ever-present witnessing observer of each experience. Choose to be gently aware of this ever-present observer of your mind can make the typical tragic dramatic day transform into a harmonic symphony of joy and love. For today, devote all your energy to watching the incessant chatter happening inside your mind without buying into its drama. It doesn't matter what the mind does today. Just be a super observer and watch with amazement. If you get tangled up in some important thoughts, don't try to stop them, change them, or participate in them. Simply sit back and even deeper behind your mind and relax your body. You can find it extremely entertaining to simply watch, listen, and have a good laugh all day long. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night the following morning. We will return here tomorrow, Friday, July 1st, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call. 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our reverse aging protocol.